Oui. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. If you like this video, please give a like and subscribe. That helps a lot. In this problem, we have n vertical lines. For example, we have seven lines here. We can use two lines together with the s axis to form a container, like line three and six. And it's asking us to find two lines so that the container contains the most water. The input we have is an array of height and the output that we are going to give out is the max area. Also in this problem, we don't consider blocking. For example, the lines inside of the container don't block the water. It can be an interesting question as well, but just don't worry about it at this problem. You just need to find the largest area. You know what my first thought was? Mm, well, we find the two tallest lines I thought it's a good idea. And they solve it. Weep. A common example is like this. So in this example, the largest container is one seven and four and five are taller. They're the tallest actually. So one seven are very far away from each other. Well, Four and five are very close to each other. So even one and seven, they are shorter, they win. So with this example, we know that the max area actually relies on both things. First, the distance between lines, and second, the height of the lines. Let me just write it down. So if a container meets only one requirement here, say it's the tallest or the widest, it doesn't ensure it's the largest. It doesn't mean anything. So there's no shortcut. Now let's talk about the height. What height will contribute to the area? Do both lines matter? Or one line that is more important than the other one? Yes, the water can be higher than the height of three, the shorter one. So the height of the shorter line besides the height of the area. Therefore, the area of a container of line i and j can be denoted as as i j equals to mean of i and j, which is a shorter line, times j minus i. So we will use this formula to calculate the area of containers. How to find the max area? Let's start with the brute force solution first. This idea is very straightforward. We just need to calculate all possible containers and find the max. We need to use two pointers, i and j. i starts from 1 and j starts from 2. So we can calculate the area of this container 1, 2 by this formula. Then J moves to the next one, which is 3. And I keeps in place. And we calculate the area of the next container. And then J moves to 4, 3, 6, to 7, the last one. Then I moves to the next integer, which is 2, and j moves to 3. And then we calculate 2, 3, and then j moves to 4, 5, 6, to 7. Okay, so this is the second round. And repeat it until I reach 6 and j 7. So this is the last container that we're going to calculate. And after we find all of these um, area of the containers, we pick the max among all area. So what is the time cost for brute force solution? It's O n squared. The first iteration requires n minus one move. And for second iteration, n minus two. 
and the, 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 the last one is 1. So if you add them up, that would be O n square. Another way to think about it is how many possible containers that we can make up. Um, we can use combination to solve this problem. So if we are picking up two lines from n lines, that would be C n2. And that equals to n times n minus 1 divided by 2. And which is exactly the same with this. So let me just write it down here. I strongly recommend everyone to think about a boot for solution before exploring around any advanced ones. Don't ignore it because it will help you come up with advanced ones. For example, based on the boot for solution, you ask yourself, are all these calculations necessary? Actually, we calculate a lot of containers that are not necessary. I'll review the solution and then walk you through um, this solution people called one pass. In this solution, we also use two pointers, i and j. i starts from the first one, but this time j starts from the end, the last one. Then we calculate the container of ij, which is s17. Okay, so here I missed an important note, which is a shorter line contributed to the height. Which pointer to move and to what direction? Here comes a very important strategy. We choose the pointers that is pointing to the shorter line. For example, in this problem, it's I. And we move I to the next one. So now I is here. But J, we keep it in its place. So now we have a new container of 2, 7. And let me just write it down. 2, 7. In this way, we always move the shorter one to the next integer. So I move to the right hand and J moves to the left and check the area of the new container. For example, in this problem, what is the next one? If you compare 2 and 7, okay, still move I because 2 is shorter than 7. And 3, 7, I. And 4, 7, J. 4, 6, J. And we stop when two pointers meet, like here. So now we have calculated these containers and we pick the max. Why? Why does it work? Okay, so let's take this container, for example, container AB. We know that first, A is shorter than B. And second, the height of this container is 2, it's decided by A. And what else do we know? Are there any containers that we are sure they must be smaller than this one? If you don't know what I'm asking about, it's totally fine. Let me ask you this question. Let, let's say um, there are some lines in between A and B. And my question is, what is A's best choice? From the perspective of A, the shorter line, its best choice is B among all lines from A to B. Why? Because as long as there is a container with A as a side, this one, the height is at most two. If the other side that is taller, say here, the height is still two, right? If the other side that is shorter and it's even worse. So from the perspective of A, its best choice is B. Therefore, we don't have to calculate these containers in between because we already know they must be smaller. Now you understand another property of the container problem. A short line's best choice is the tall line. 
but the tall line's best choice, we don't know. It could be, it could not be. If the line that is not in between say, hey, I'm here, larger than AB. So what we are talking about are all lines in between A and B. So after understanding this property, let's take a look at this algorithm. On the initial stage, if we must shrink the range ij, which direction to shrink? Based on the property, we know that 1 already found its best choice, which is 7. So 1 doesn't have to form any containers with any one between 1 and 7, because 1, 7 must be the largest one. So from the perspective of 1, these containers are not necessary because 1, 7 must beat all of them. However, from the perspective of 7, 1 may not be 7's best choice. It's possible that 7 will form larger containers with lines in between, so 7 still needs to search. Therefore, we move I, not J. It's like when you're dating someone, you're pretty much sure that this person is your Mr. Right or Mrs. Right, but this person is like, Hmm, I don't want to sell down right now. All right, no problem. So we form a new container of 2 and 7. I'm going to check if it is larger than the previous one or not. Here comes a question. What if the heights are equal? Which one should we move? The answer is either one. The only scenario that we care about is this. So, the two taller lines are in between. In this algorithm, by moving one side, we will finally reach them, regardless of the order. I first, J first, doesn't matter. Of course, you can move both to accelerate the speed. Okay, so what is the time cost? It's an N. Why? How many containers have we traversed in this example? It's an N. Because two pointers starts on both sides, and they meet in between. That's exactly n minus 1. Think about in this scenario where n, the last one, is the tallest. So in this example, i moves from the first one to n minus 1. That's exactly n minus 1 moves for containers. Another way to think about tn is by comparing it with Brute force. Let's think about how many containers that we have eliminated. In pair 1, 7, these are what we eliminated. There are n minus 2 possibilities. In the second iteration, when we have 2, 7, we don't have to calculate 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5, 2, 6. So these are not necessary. These are n minus 3 in total containers. In the second last iteration, we eliminate one unnecessary container. In the last iteration, there's no containers that we eliminated, so that's zero. And if you add the numbers up from uh, n minus 2 to 1, okay, now. What if I add this number with this? Can you guess? Yes, that will be exactly this number. Let's try it. A minus 1 plus 2 divided by 1 minus 2. A minus 1, 2 comes back, plus A minus 1, N minus 2. And that is A minus 1 times that. So they add the containers that I eliminated with the containers that I traversed. That will be the total number of the containers. This proof is beautiful. I found it on blog and I add it in the description. You can check it out. Okay, that's for this video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give a like and subscribe. That helps a lot. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down here. Bye.